Hi everyone, my name is Ken Rudin and I run the analytics team at Facebook. We've been thinking a lot about how we approach analytics at Facebook and I've been talking to a lot of different people in the industry and some of the things that we've realized is that there are a lot of commonly held beliefs about big data that need to be challenged. The first one is that if you want big data, you need to go out and buy Hadoop and then you're pretty much set. And there are a lot of people who are turning off their relational systems and replacing them with Hadoop. The problem is that Hadoop is a technology and big data isn't about technology. Big data is about business needs. It's about the need to do deeper analysis on more data. It's about the need to do different types of analyses using approaches and algorithms that SQL isn't well suited for. It's about the need to iterate faster because we don't want to be constrained by a rigid schema. And when you start thinking about big data in terms of business needs instead of the technologies, it opens up the possibility of using a much broader range of technologies. So in reality, big data should include Hadoop and it should include relational and it should include any other technology that is suited for the task at hand. At Facebook, we're a young enough company that we started by using Hadoop as our core data technology rather than relational. And as we start thinking about big data from the perspective of business needs, we're realizing that Hadoop isn't always the best tool for everything we need to do. And that using the wrong tool can sometimes be painful. So, whereas most companies start with relational and then they complement that with Hadoop to do big data better, we started with Hadoop and now we're complementing it with relational to do big data better. When do we use each one of these technologies? Well, if you look at the type of analysis we're doing, we do exploratory analysis within Hadoop to look through the data and figure out what are the metrics that really matter. Once we know what those metrics are and we want to do operational analysis on it, the slicing and dicing of these metrics by the various dimensions, it's faster and simpler to do that in relational. If we look at the granularity of the data, we keep the lowest level of grain in our Hadoop system. So whenever you want to look at something at the lowest level of detail, Hadoop is optimized for that. However, if we want to look at transformed data and aggregated data, Relational is easier for doing that. Again, the slicing and dicing is faster and simpler in a technology like relational. And when we look at the time frame of the data that we want to analyze, all of the data within Facebook streams directly into Hadoop. So if we want to do monitoring, that comes directly out of our Hadoop system. However, if we want to do trending over days or weeks or months or quarters or even years, Again, relational is a better technology for that type of analysis. So the bottom line is use the right technology for whatever it is you need. Big data is expansive and inclusive. The second commonly held belief is that big data gives you better and deeper answers. And it does. It gives you more answers because you've got more data to look at. And it gives you deeper, richer insights because again, you've got more data on which to do your analysis. But the problem is coming up with more brilliant answers and deeper and richer answers to questions that nobody really cares about doesn't add any value. And it's got to be about value. You can use science and technology and statistics to figure out what the answers are but it is still an art to figure out what the right questions are. So what are some of the ways we've come up with to figure out how to help us focus on what the right questions are? The first thing that we've done is focusing on hiring the right people. It is no longer sufficient to hire people who have a PhD in statistics. You also need to make sure that the people you hire have business savvy. Business savvy I believe is becoming one of the most critical assets, one of the most critical skills for any analyst to have. And how do you figure out if a potential analyst that you're looking at has business savvy? When you interview them, don't focus just on how do we calculate this metric. 
Give them a case study, a business case study from your own business and ask them, in this scenario, what are the metrics you think would be important to look at? That's how you can get at that. A second thing is train everyone on analytics. In Facebook, we have a program that we call Data Camp. And it's a two-week intensive, immersive program that teaches you everything you need to know about analytics. And all of our analysts go through that. But it's not just for the analysts. We have product managers go through that. We have designers go through that. We have people in finance and people in operations go through that. We even have a special version of the class for our engineers. And the value of having everybody go through it is that you give everybody a common language of data that they can discuss topics and issues with throughout the whole company. Another thing that's really important about the training is what you train them on. 50% of that training should be about the tools and the technologies and how to use them. But the other 50% should be on how do you figure out how to frame the right business questions and how do you frame business questions in such a way that you can use data to get the answers. A third thing that we focus on is making sure that we put our analysts in an org structure that allows them to have the biggest impact. There are a lot of different org structures that people wrestle with. One of the common ones is the centralized structure, where you've got various business teams and then a centralized analytics team. The advantage of this is that you get common standards and processes across all your analysts. The disadvantage is that because they are a centralized team separate from the organizations that they serve, they're a bit disconnected from the goals of those organizations. And because of that, they tend to be more reactive, meaning they sit there and wait for requests to come in from other areas of the business and respond to them rather than being proactive. The flip side of this is a lot of other organizations go the decentralized route, where you have the analysts within the actual business groups themselves. And this gives you great alignment between what the analysts are doing and the business goals. However, you no longer have the shared standards and processes. So that results in inconsistencies. You ask two different groups the same question, and you get at least two different answers. It also leads to redundant efforts because these separate groups don't have a central coordination mechanism. So you'll find that multiple groups will be trying to solve the exact same problem redundantly. What we found works best at Facebook is a hybrid of those two that we call the embedded model. It looks a little bit like the centralized model in that everybody does roll up to a central team, but the analysts physically sit with the organizations that they're providing service for. So in that sense, it looks like a decentralized model. The benefit there is that you get your common standards and processes from the centralization, but you also get great alignment and connection to the goals. And in fact, the analysts share the goals of the teams in which they are embedded. So we found that this hybrid model really gives us the best of both worlds. The next commonly held belief is about big data focusing on actionable insights. Everyone feels that the goal of big data is to give you actionable insights. It's not. Let me look at a quick history of where we've been with analytics. We started decades ago with reporting where the goal was, tell me what's going on in my business. And people realized, I need more than that. I need to get a little bit of insight into why that's happening. And that lasted for a while. And then we took the next leap, and people said, you can't just stop with insights. You have to have actionable insights. You need to be able to do something about it. That's the real goal of analytics. And that's pretty much where we are today. But that's not far enough. You need to close the gap. You need to go the last mile and evangelize your insights so that people actually act on them, and there is impact out of this. What do I mean by impact? Impact means generally one of three things. First, it means moving a metric, such as coming up with a way to drive 
user registrations up by 5% and actually driving it up by 5%. That's an impact. Or changing a product, such as when we analyzed our own social graph and found out that if I know Jonathan and you know Jonathan, then I probably know you, which led to a feature that helps me find people I probably already know within Facebook. Or it means changing a behavior or a process, such as changing the process for forecasting user growth or revenue growth. The bottom line is that you need to own the outcome. Our job as analysts is to use data to move the needle. It doesn't matter how brilliant our analyses are. If nothing changes, we have made no impact. If nothing changes, then it doesn't make a difference whether or not you even work at that company. If nothing changed, and if it, if it doesn't make a difference whether or not you even worked at that company, how can you say you added any value? So you have to close the gap, go the last mile, and hold yourselves accountable for making sure that your insights actually lead to an impact. So, in summary, we really need to rethink how we think about big data. We need to focus on the business needs of big data, not the technologies behind it. We need to focus on making sure we are asking the right questions, not just coming up with more and more answers to questions that no one really cares about. And we need to focus on holding ourselves accountable for impact beyond just the insight. The people who do this well are driving tremendous impact in their companies and changing the industries in which they work. And as analysts, that's the biggest impact we can have. Thank you.